Men and women are created equally. You bet they are. Therefore, women should be pastors. But what about 1 Timothy 2? So you don't think men and women are equal? It's the Mott and Bailey fallacy. In the old days, there would be a Mott. I like to think of it as a strong tower. You could even call it a castle if you like. It is a safe place, but the Bailey is where we do commerce, where life takes place. It's where the folks reside. And these days, people are using the old, let's run back to the tower after we've spread bad information. This tactic is used so often. Let's see if we can identify some of these switcheroos. Here we go. Science and medicine do much good. Amen. Therefore, everyone should get vaccinated. Hold on a second. Well, don't you believe in science and medicine? <laughs> Told you this gets done constantly. The mot is science has been helpful. Don't you therefore think that everybody should simply obey science and do what they're told? Well, wait a second. I agree that science is good, but that isn't the necessary application of that mod. And yet, this rhetorical linguistics trick is designed to get you to look like a bad guy. Oh, you're a science denier. Um, no. Here's another one for you. Grandmothers are precious, therefore everyone should wear a mask. Wait, I'm not sure masks are actually effective. Do you want my grandmother to die? Of course we value elders. That isn't debatable. It's the application and a reasonable conversation about whose job is it to keep whom safe. Furthermore, we can take a look at, indeed, scientific evidence to determine how good masks actually work. We can have that conversation, but that conversation does not want to be had by Mr. Mott and Bailey. Here's an example. There are many ways for people to be healthy besides taking prescription drugs. Yeah, that's true. Therefore, homeopathic medicine can cure cancer. Wait, um, where's your proof on that? Well, don't you think there were other ways for people to stay healthy whilst homeopathic medicine might not be debated with this sort of trick. There are issues du jour. That sounds good. Which are also the issues of the day where the Mott and Bailey is used constantly. Uh, here we go. Capitalism has some unfair outcomes. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Therefore, capitalism must be totally destroyed and replaced with socialism. Well, wait a second, though. Socialism has never worked anywhere, ever. Do you want people to be taken advantage of? Agree? Disagree? Therefore, you look like you are a terrible person. Is everything a Mott and Bailey? No, but we need to identify when this is not necessarily that and be able to say, I'm sorry, I disagree with you on this. And when they then run back to the Mott to accuse you of being terrible, you can say, time out. We need to work through this logical fallacy, like this one. Transgender people have been discriminated against for years. I think everybody can agree with that. Transgender people should be able to compete in whatever gender category they choose. Well, wait a second, wouldn't that be unfair and potentially dangerous? Do you want people to be discriminated against? Of of course, we don't want people to be harmed or hurt. We agree on that mod. But the Bailey application that men who are born male should be competing in, I don't know, let's say a women's swimming meet, that isn't the same thing as wanting people to be treated in a kindly manner. But doesn't matter. If you disagree with the application, therefore, you are homophobic, racist, misogynist. Here's another one. Black Lives Matter. Amen. Therefore, we should defund the police. Wait, wait a second, crime will spike. So you must not think that black lives matter. Here's another one. Black lives matter, yep. Therefore, we should have national reparations. Well, wait a second, you want me to pay for the sins of my great-great-grandparents? So you must not think that black lives matter. This is a prevalent logical fallacy that is used with virtually everything that is controversial these days. And sad to say, it does work. Sadly, we should not ruin the planet. 
Yeah, right. Therefore, we need global warming summits and controls. But uh, it, it, that hasn't been proven yet. I just want to save the planet. Don't you? It is not merely the world that uses this trick. The Mott and Bailey has been imported into the church, and there are people, typically liberal, who will use the Mott and Bailey fallacy to change what has been understood pretty clearly for 2,000 years. This is example number one. Men and women are created equally. You bet they are. Therefore, women should be pastors. But what about 1 Timothy 2? So you don't think men and women are equal? See what they did there? If you do not endorse female pastors, then you're just a terrible, sexist, horrible person for wanting to keep women down and not allowing them to exercise their gifts. Now, we can have a debate about what 1 Timothy 2 says, but to be a victim of the Mott and Bailey fallacy, that just ain't fair. Somebody will make the claim that God, he's imminent, he's near, he's our father. And we would all say, yes, that is true. The doctrine of imminence, God is close, he is near, he is loving. We all agree on that truth, but then, typically a liberal, will take the idea and then say out in the marketplace or in the congregation in this instance, therefore, we can worship God any way that we want. Hold on, wait a second. When you then tag that person, they run back to the mountain and say, well, don't you think that God is our father who is near to us? Yeah, I agree with that. But your application is a stinkeroo. Here's another church, Mott and Bailey. Some people would say justification. What a wonderful doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Therefore, it doesn't matter if we sin. Hold the phone, Henrietta. Do you see what they did there? They took the doctrine of justification. This glorious doctrine that says we are totally forgiven of sins past, present, future. We agree on that, but somebody then takes that agreed upon mot. They run out to the Bailey to say, yeah, let's just not make such a big deal out of sin. After all, Jesus died for our sins, didn't he? Yes, and that's precisely why we hate sin, not to mention when we read the Bible. God hates sin, and if God hates it, then with my new heart, with my new desires, I hate it too. And I can't use the doctrine of justification to give license to licentiousness. Let's see if there's another Mott Bailey. Somebody says the doctrine of justification. It's amazing. And if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Yeah, we already agreed. Therefore, Christians should never sin. Wait a second. This is not that. But as soon as you say, hold on, my sinless perfectionist friend, um, I don't think you've got that right biblically. Well, don't you believe that we're new creations in Christ? Yes, I do. But this is not that. Don't let people use this Mott and Bailey fallacy to undermine orthodox theology. Might I encourage you? Just be listening for this. You can even hear it in sermons. You'll hear it in Sunday. Sunday school classes, identify the mot, identify the Bailey, and then bring in the judge to discern well, who's right on which issue here, and that judge is the Bible. Hello, Maria. This is Todd Friel from your auto insurance company, noticing you're not taking advantage of any of our life insurance policies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Oh, really, you're not afraid to die. That's funny. Now listen to this clip from Paul Washer. I'm talking about you. So what do you think of that, Maria? Maria? Maria?